تؤذون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار الحمد لله we praise the Lord we seek his assistance and we seek his forgiveness we seek refuge in Allah from evil within ourselves and from our bad deeds over Allah guys there is none that can lead him astray and whoever is led astray there is no guide for him I bear witness that no God has the right to be worshipped other than Allah He is alone and has no partners And I bear witness that Muhammad is his slave and his messenger O you who believe, fear Allah as you ought to be feared And don't die except as Muslims O humanity, fear your Lord who has created you from a single soul And created from it its mate And scattered from them too many men and women And fear Allah for me demand you and fear Allah for you demand your mutual rights and don't cut off relations with the wombs that bore you indeed Allah is a raqib over you O you who believe fear Allah and say that which is correct in order that he may accept from you your deeds and forgive you of your sins and whoever obeys Allah and his messenger achieves the greatest achievement amma ba'du certainly the most truthful speech is the book of Allah and the finest guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the most evil of affairs are newly invented matters in this deen and every newly invented matter in this deen is a bid'ah and every bid'ah is a straying and every straying is in the fire we've been trying to remind ourselves over the last weeks and months of the importance of obedience to Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and adherence to the Quran and the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as we've done over the past years Alhamdulillah And we've warned ourselves against disobedience to Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam From leaving off adherence to Allah's book and the sunnah of His Messenger Muhammad Alayhi Wasallatu Wasallam And we've reminded ourselves of the evil consequences of sin and disobedience to Allah and His Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam And we've enjoined upon ourselves to enjoin what is right and to forbid what is wrong to enjoin what is right meaning to enjoin what Allah has commanded us and his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to forbid what is wrong to forbid what Allah and his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam alayhi forbids and we discuss the evil consequences of leaving off the enjoining of what is right and the forbidding of what is wrong and these points we cannot remind ourselves of enough but we continue to remind ourselves because we want to move forward inshallah tabarak wa ta'ala and to move forward is to move forward by obedience to Allah and his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to enjoin what is right of adherence to Allah's book and the sunnah of his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam this is the way for us to move forward and what will prevent us from moving forward is leaving off adherence to Allah's book and the sunnah of his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam by being disobedient to Allah and his messenger alayhi wasallatu wasallam by living lives of sins of living the life of sin that this will prevent us from moving forward so we call and remind ourselves to do what will help us to move forward and we warn ourselves from that which will keep us from moving forward or hold us back and in light of that we want to pick up where we left off earlier today in the Jumu'ah Khutbah of one of the problems that will keep us back and we had dealt with this issue some time ago <coughs> and we thought that it was understood but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he teaches us وَذَكِّرْ فَنَّ ذِكْرَ تَنْفَعُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ I remind because the reminder benefits the believers this hadith I'm about to quote from Al-Bukhari and Muslim with the wording of Imam Muslim Rahimahullah the first time we did this hadith the people said that I was an extremist and that I was unrealistic in my approach of giving da'wah and then we did the hadith again at a later time to give the people chance to understand as this hadith is issue number two and the first issue of every second issue 
his obedience to Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is why we always say obey Allah and his messenger alayhi wa sallam. And don't disobey Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Follow the Quran and the Sunnah. Obey Allah and his messenger alayhi wa sallam. We always emphasize this point because this is point number one. And if point number one is not understood, there will never be a point number two that can be understood. And this is why the Muslim said, he's an extremist. Because we haven't got point number one down of obedience to Allah and obedience to his messenger, salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi. That means that every time we discuss point number two, if it goes against our desires, we reject it because we're not in accordance to Allah's book and the sunnah of his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But since we emphasize this enough, we have to go to point number two so that we can move on inshaAllah ta'ala. Now we moved on and we quoted this hadith a second time in a lecture and the acceptance of it was a lot better than the first time. Walhamdulillah. And then I remember that we covered it again for a third time and the results were even better, walhamdulillah. And now here we are again for the fourth time as a reminder of what we have already accepted yesterday. Of what we have rejected the day before yesterday because we didn't understand the importance of obeying Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We didn't understand the importance of adherence to the Quran and the Sunnah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We didn't know what it meant to enjoy what is right and forbid what is wrong. And that enjoying what is right is not what is culturally acceptable here to us in America or in the masjids, but what is in accordance with Allah's book and the sunnah of His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That which is obedience to Allah and His Messenger Wasallam. And forbidding what is wrong is not what society views as wrong or what we normally accept to be wrong or displeasing or unacceptable, but what is wrong and what is forbidden is that which has been forbidden by Allah and His Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That which we find forbidden in His book and in the Sunnah of His Messenger Alayhi Wasallam, Wasallam, this is what is wrong and must be made forbidden. And we must prohibit it like the Messenger does in this hadith from the authority of Abu Huraira. رضي الله عنه عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال كتب على ابن آدم نصيبه من الزنا مدرك ذلك لا محالة فالعينان زناهما النظر والأذنان زناهما الاستماع واللسان زناه زن واللسان زناه الكلام واليد زناها البطش والرجل زناها الخطى والقلب يهوي ويتمنى والفرج يصدق ذلك أو يكذبه أخرجه البخاري ومسلم واللفظ له أبو هريرة رضي الله عنه in our race on the authority of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم who said الزناء has been decreed for the son of Adam he will fall into it and there is no escape from it so the two eyes they commit zina and their zina is the looking and the two ears commit a zina and their zina is the listening and the tongue commits zina and their zina is the talking and the hand commits zina, and the zina of the hand is the touch. And the feet commit zina, and the zina of the feet is the walking. And the heart wants to and likes to, and the private parts either agree or disagree. And this is collected by Al Bukhari and Muslim, and this is the narration of Imam Muslim, Rahimahullah. And this hadith of the Messenger وسلم, of which outwardly is clear to us, the practice of it, we ask Allah to make clear to us also. As this hadith, which none of us doubt its authenticity, as it's from the hadith of Al Bukhari and Muslim, called the hadith Muttafaqun alayhi, meaning the Muslims 
have unanimously agreed upon the authenticity of this hadith and there's no discussion around its authenticity. Now what's left for us is with the likes of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls us to with his statement وَمَا كَانَ لِمُؤْمِنٍ وَلَا مُؤْمِنَةٍ إِذَا قَضَى اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَمْرًا أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُمُ الْخِيَرَةُ مِنْ أَمْرِهِمْ وَمَنْ يَعْصِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدَ ضَلَّ ضَلَالًا مُبِينًا Allah Ta'ala, He says it is not right or correct or proper that a believing man or a believing woman once Allah and His Messenger has decided an affair that you have any choice in that affair and whoever disobeys Allah and His Messenger has gone clearly astray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <coughs> sent His last Prophet and Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the guidance and here in this guidance the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam teaches us the separation of the sexes in Islam and the prohibition of the intermingling of the sexes in Islam Yesterday it may have been okay for us to spread amongst ourselves when we're taught no intermingling amongst the sexes Astaghfirullah I'm not gay What you trying to say? Or like the Muslims say We Arabs, what you telling us to do an Arab thing for? Okay, all of that was okay yesterday. We didn't know Allah's book or the sunnah of His Messenger والسلام, But now we know. So those excuses are no good. If we have some new excuses that are mentioned, what are those excuses? Please, Wallahi, bring them to the floor. As we want, inshallah ta'ala tonight to open up the floor so that this point is clear to us, inshallah ta'ala, as oftentimes we hear that some points are not understood but that people are afraid to bring them up publicly because they say they might get blasted or whatever the case may be but if something is not correct or if there is something about the ayat or the hadith of the messenger sallallahu alaihi that doesn't seem to make sense to us or that we, we feel that the understanding that's being presented is not correct and something is missing, then let's try to come to an understanding. Because our understanding of these texts are going to affect the way that we live. And really we're trying to understand these texts in order to help us live <coughs> uh, lives of righteousness, of obedience to Allah and His Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we're trying to, here in the community and in the Islamic Center of America in particular, to help us set guidelines or policies and procedures or rules or what have you here that would be in accordance to Allah's book and the sunnah of His Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so that we might be correct in our worship of Allah Ta'ala. Here in this hadith, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he shows us everyone will fall into it. That means it's from the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we will fall into zina. We had dealt with before, and now is not the time to explain in detail, but to explain in brief, that the qadr of Allah is two types of qadr. And that one of the qadrs you're not going to be responsible for, and this is what's important for us to know of the two types, you're not going to be responsible for when you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then there's another type that you're going to be responsible for when you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this would has to be understood and many Muslims who don't understand this what they wind up doing is making both qadrs one qadr and they make that the one that they're not responsible in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so they set themselves up to be disobedient to Allah and His Messenger والسلام, with the excuse of the Qadr that they won't be responsible in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when in fact they will be responsible and they set themselves up for the displeasure of their Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. In brief, the Qadr that we're not responsible for from the affairs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed that we have no choice over. Where you were born who your parents were, 
What was your first language? What's the color of your skin? The texture of your hair? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed that everyone will have the shape and the form that he has and he will hold them accountable for it subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is from the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al kawniya But the other type of qadr <coughs> It's from the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed and He's holding us responsible for it. And this is the Qadr al Shariya, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us and He's going to hold us responsible for what He commands. Now, He, he decreed that we will fall into a zina and He prohibited us from falling into a zina. So, what he has prohibited us, we have to stay away from. Because we're going to be questioned about what he has prohibited us, subhanahu wa ta'ala. What he has decreed, meaning what we fall into out of mistake, or unintentionally, or because of our ignorance of the text of his book or the sunnah of his messenger, salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi, we hope that we're not held accountable for that. But what we know that Allah prohibits in His book and in the Sunnah of His Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam we're responsible. Don't say I have to look and Allah decreed for it. Allah decreed I will look as He decreed everything so I'm not responsible. You're responsible and He decreed. And Allah created you and what you do. Allah created us and He created what we do. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded and prohibited and He will hold us responsible for what He commands and what He prohibits. If we do what He commands, He will reward us. And if we stay away from what He prohibits, He will reward us. But if we don't do what He commands and we do what He prohibits, then we set ourselves up for the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and where we fall up under his decree, maybe he'll forgive us and we ask for his forgiveness. The Messenger والسلام, he teaches us that the two eyes commit zina and their zina is the looking. Meaning we have been prohibited to look at what is not halal for us to look at. And the looking at that which is not permissible for us to look at is prohibited and we will be held responsible and accountable and we set ourselves up to be punished for doing so. Looking at women is not okay. Not in the newspaper, not in the magazine, not in the TV, not in a picture, and not in real life. For the women who are not permissible to us, it is not permissible for us to look at them. It sounds extreme because we live in the land of kufr. And we've been raised on kufr. And our whole understanding and framework and background is based on other than Allah's book and the sunnah of His Messenger sallallahu alayhi So it seems strange. And the Messenger taught us, Al-Islam bada'a gharibaan wa sayyudu gharibaan kama bada'a. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam alayhi in this authentic hadith, he said, Islam began strange. And it will return to being strange just as it began. And wallahi, these statements are evidence of that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to Islam. The two ears commit zina and the zina is listening. And listening could be directly with your own ears. Or listening with the headphones on these stereo sets. Or the listening on your computer by way of the internet. Or by listening on your telephone. Or by listening with whatever other means we use to listen. Listening to the, that which Allah has made forbidden to us is forbidden. And the zina will be committed with your ears when you listen to those women you have no right to listen to. Whether you listen to them on the music from the CD or the tape, or whether you listen to them on the TV, 
or whether you listen to them on the phone or by the internet or by whatever other means you listen to these women that are not permissible for you to listen to this zina has been made forbidden to you and if it sounds strange فَطُوبَى لِلْغُرَبَى then give glad tidings to the strangers as the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said this is the practice of Islam we're not inventing something from ourselves we're discussing the hadith of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam this isn't a personal discussion about what we should do or what should be our outlook when it comes to the two sexes this is guidance from Allah's messenger who Allah describes وَمَا يَنْتِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَى إِنْ هُوَ اللَّهُ وَحْيُ يُحَى and he does not speak from his own desires but he only speaks from revelation revealed to him وَمَا آتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُوهُ وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُوا and whatever the messenger gives you take it and whatever the messenger prohibits you leave it لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَذَكَرَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا For surety you have the finest example in the Messenger of Allah for those who believe in Allah on the last day and remember Allah often. Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said and the tongue commits zina and the zina of the tongue is talking <coughs> talking to the women who are not permissible for you is not permissible whether you talk to them face to face whether you talk to them to the letter you gave to the little boy to give to the sister whether you talk to her in the chat room or the computer with your hands the way you typed or any other way that you sent the letter through the mail or by the fax machine or any other way that you talk to her by taping it and giving the tape to her for her to listen or talking to her on her answer machine or any other way that you use to talk to the sister that's not permissible to you by talking to her with someone else's tongue tell the sister so and so you talk to the little children tell whatchamacallam over there I like her who's her wali What's her number? Talking to that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made forbidden to us to talk to is forbidden. And to do it is zina as the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. And if it sounds strange, then give glad tidings to the strangers. As this is the Islam we find in Allah's book and in the sunnah of his Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ رَسُولٍ إِلَّا لِيُطَاعَ بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ And we have not sent a messenger except that he be obeyed by the permission of Allah. Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi he said, The hand commits zina and the hand is the touch. Whether the touch is you shaking her hand. Whether the touch is any other touch other than shaking the hands, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from that and that which is greater than that. This is prohibited as we see in the sunnah of the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's not okay. I didn't mean anything by my touch. If you didn't mean anything by it, why did you do it in disobedience to Allah's Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Allah's Messenger alayhi wa sallatu wa sallam, he taught us that the feet commit zina and the feet and the zina of the feet is walking. Wallahi, look at the detail or the clarity of this deen. Nothing has been left out, walhamdulillah. Walking, what you doing over there? I ain't doing nothing. The feet commit zina, and their zina is the steps. The steps that you took to be in that area so that the sister could see you. Or that you could see the sister. Those steps to go over there. Every step towards zina is haram. As the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prohibited in this hadith. Why do we think it's okay to walk down the sister's hallway? Those steps are okay in light of what ayah and what hadith. 
and tell us what we don't understand from the hadith of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi when he said the fikam is zina and the zina is walking. And if he doesn't mean that, that means being in the sister's area, walking in the sister's area, wallahi, tell us what it means. And what is the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam prohibiting us? Wallahi, let's come to an understanding because we're responsible for adherence to the hadith of the Messenger alayhi salatu wasallam. This is what we're going to be questioned about on Yawm Al-Qiyamah when we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We heard it, we're responsible. We can't say we don't know anymore. And Allah, the people who are not here who say, I don't know, are, are still responsible. We have Islamic education going on in our city, walhamdulillah. Whoever doesn't come to learn is responsible for what's being taught. Whoever doesn't come to learn is being held responsible for it. And why isn't he responsible for it? Because he's ignorant. It's permissible to be ignorant in Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us, don't listen so you don't be responsible. Allah wa ayah says, don't listen, you won't be responsible. What hadith of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, they quote in all them ayat and hadith in them classes, man, don't go to it, you won't be responsible. What ayah says that? What hadith of the Messenger alayhi wa wa sallam? Why do we feel that when people are trying to fear Allah? Because they understand that the steps are zina. And you see the sister walking far away from the brothers. You laugh at her. Based on what? <clears throat> Based on making mockery of the sunnah? We hope that this isn't the case because this is kufrun billah. As Allah Ta'ala says, Abillahi wa أَبِاللَّهِ وَآيَاتِهِ وَرَسُولِهِ كُنْتُمْ تَسْتَهْزِئُونَ لَا تَعْتَذِرُوا قَدْ كَفَرْتُمْ بَعْدِ إِيمَانِكُمْ Say, are you making mockery of Allah and His ayah and His messenger? There is no excuse for you. You have disbelieved. You have committed kufr after your iman. The sister, she walking around, you laughing. Look at her. Where's she going? She's going away from disobedience to Allah and His Messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam, is where she's going. The brother, he's walking around like that. You say, astaghfirullah, man, what the brother doing walking all over there? Man, he going too far. Yeah, he's going far, far away from disobedience to Allah and His Messenger والسلام, And your statement might be too far. Because if there's any mockery in your statement to the one who adheres to the sunnah of the Messenger والسلام, والسلام, There is no excuse for you, you have committed kufr after your iman. This is the clarity that the Messenger Sallallahu brings us to this issue. This isn't for us alone. This is for us and to teach our children and to teach the Muslims this. Wallahi, why should we teach the Muslims this when the Kufar have already learned this from us? Wallahi, the Kufar in East Orange have learned that the Muslims practice separation of sexes and they prohibit intermingling tell me the kufar haven't learned that wallahi the kufar learned it we were here on the day of al jumuah when they had the unveiling ceremony of ahl sunnah plaza naming over there in the back and the people came from city hall and they didn't bring any cameras and they had a lady councilman or whatever you call it of this ward to deliver the plat to myself. And the lady stood with the sisters on the lady's side. And the brothers stood on the brother's side. Muslims and Kufar. And when the lady was finished, she passed it over to the Kafir man 
because there's no prohibition amongst them to have him give it to me. Because even the kuffar know that the Muslims prohibit intermingling because it's revelation from their book and the sunnah of the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi and we're upon that because that's what Ahlul Sunnah means. Wallahi, the lady in the corner store say, listen, I saw your children here intermingling. I told them don't do it. And I'm telling you they're sneaking behind your back. Stay on top of your children. It's not her religion. It's not her deen. And she doesn't agree with it. Proof she doesn't agree with it is she didn't take her shahada when we call her to Islam. That's proof she doesn't agree. Why is she telling us our children are intermingling? Because she knows we ain't with that. If that's the case with the kufar, tell us we're not responsible for not knowing intermingling has been prohibited in Islam. Tell us we're not responsible for the separation of the sexes. Tell me how we're innocent. Tell me how we're innocent when the kufar know how we're innocent. Tell me how we're innocent when we hear the hadith of the Messenger والسلام, We're not innocent. We're either obedient or guilty. May Allah make us innocent. This isn't for us alone. This is for our children too. And in holding on to this is guidance for us. And this is the way to success. And leaving it is the way to failure and destruction. The heart wants to and likes to. The heart wants to and likes to. The soul is inclined to do evil except when my Lord shows mercy on it. <clears throat> so the soul, the soul likes to do wrong. And then the shaitan is encouraging and whispering. And some people are following him, following the footsteps of the shaitan. The private parts will either agree or disagree, or confirm or invalidate. May Allah save us, but the private parts of some of us have been confirming. May Allah help us to repent. And may Allah save the rest of us from confirming. This is what we want to do, but this is what we have been prohibited from. And you're wanting to do it, and liking to do it, and loving to do it, and can't hold yourself back from doing it, is not an excuse when you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're responsible. Allah created you with a desire, and He's going to hold you responsible for it. Now, Allah created us, we don't have no option. You love women? I'm a man. Allah created us with that. But He also gave us checks and balances for that desire He gave us and He'll hold us responsible for it. Not just for us, for our children too. Those little boys and girls, I keep using the word boys and girls. And the boys and girls hate me to use it. And I use it so they can hate for me to use it so that they can understand and you can understand that they're adults and responsible when they enter into puberty. Now, you don't like me to call your boy a boy? Well, make him a man. You don't want me to call your girl a girl? Make her a lady. Make her understand what men and women understand from this deen that they're responsible. They're responsible. Well, I have little boys and girls, may Allah help us with them. But when they get old enough, they're responsible. We're responsible as long as they're in our households too. There's double responsibility. You responsible and they're responsible. You become relieved of your responsibility when you delivered the message and made the effort. You free yourself of your responsibility. And then they're responsible. And then they're responsible. Don't say the little innocent girl. 
Girl can't be innocent living a life of disobedience to Allah and His Messenger. How is a girl innocent when she does an abominable deed and travels down an evil path? How you call that innocent? Wallahi, based on what? Based on the American values? How many times are we going to quote the, contradic the contradictions in this foolish man-made system? There has no comparison to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can't get married until you're whatever age, 17, 18. But you can go to Planned Parenthood at 11, 12, whatever, get birth control. No. Then you have sex, depending on which age, 18 and 13, or 18 and 16, or whatever, then it's rape. All that make us believe that stuff is okay? Wallahi, how is okay? How is okay because in America, girlfriend and boyfriend is acceptable, that make it okay Islamically? Because they say it's okay, that mean we corny? How you corny practice in Islam? The sunnah look good. Islam looks good. What looks better than Islam? Filth? Dirt? What looks better than Islam? What's more upright than Al-Islam? How the Muslim corny practice in Islam? What's corny about practicing Islam? Wallahi, show us. Why we accept Islam? Is corny? Islam is the haq walhamdulillah. Our children are responsible, man. Teach your children responsibility, man. Stop act making like your children are not resp they're responsible. Wallahi, they're responsible. And you're doing a disservice to your children by thinking that you can bear the burden of your children. You can't handle yourself. Wallahi, miseducate your children. Don't educate them to the Quran and the Sunnah. Tell me how you're going to meet with your Lord. Tell me you how you're going to handle Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on Yawm al-Qiyamah with disobedience to Him. He made you responsible for your family. Who made you responsible for your family? Your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. You neglect your responsibility and disobey the Lord who gave you your life to worship Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tell me how you going to handle Him. Let alone how you think you're going to handle your, your daughter's or your son's disobedience too. Don't be all mad at me because my girl pregnant. She ain't no bad girl anyway. You done made mistakes in your life too. Wallah, you can't defend your own soul. How are you going to defend your daughter? It's no defense. I sit there and listen to you all day, defender. And I, I'll accept your defense. But I ain't your Lord. I'm not your Lord. My acceptance of your excuses do not save you in the sight of Allah. I tell you, MashaAllah, don't mean that you don't have a reckoning day with Allah. Somebody say, yeah man, they out of it. They in the masjid talking about you, nix them. We don't even got to come to the masjid no more. That's right, I ain't coming either. Nix them. Tell me, because they all agree that that act of disobedience is okay, they don't have to meet Allah. Wallahi, don't deceive yourselves. Don't deceive yourselves from the meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is real. And we're responsible for what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he made us responsible for in his book, in the sunnah of his messenger alayhi wa to his salam. And our children are responsible too. Our children are not developed. May Allah help us to develop them. But they are developed enough to be responsible because the creator who created them knows them. أَلَا يَعْلَمُ مَنْ خَلَقَ وَهُوَ اللَّطِيفُ الْخَبِيرُ Doesn't the one who creates knows best and he's a latif al-khabir? Allah created man, he knows what he created. You saying, they, how you gonna make the girl responsible man? Look how little the girl is, she don't know better. أَأَنْتُمْ أَعْلَمُ أَمِ اللَّهِ Do you know best or does Allah? Who knows best? Wallahi, Allah knows best and He gave us guidance.
Our children are responsible. Let's teach our children responsibility because we won't be able to save our children. We won't save ourselves. We're going to run from our children on Yom Al-Qiyamah. If they were righteous, we're going to run from them. If the prophets of Allah, Salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi majma'in, if their dua on Yom Al-Qiyamah is Rabbi Sallam Sallam, what's going to be our dua? Oh Allah, just save us. That's what the prophets and messengers are going to say. What are we going to say? Wallahi, this is a responsibility for us. Let's teach our children this responsibility. And let's stand up and handle our responsibility when it comes to this chapter of a zina. It's an abominable deed and it's an evil way. Let your children first understand yourselves. Cut all that old talk out from jah Jahiliyyah over with. We responsible now. Jahiliyyah over all that tough talk. Man, I used to keep a girl. All that stuff ain't praiseworthy no more, man. That's, Allah knows best that might just be a sin. I don't know. Wallahi, how that sound? I used to keep a girl. How that sound? Like it's going to be on a good, on my scale of good deeds? Boy, your father... MashaAllah. Just keep women. Tell me is that on your scale of good deeds? What kind of what side that what side that statement gonna be on? And what type of impact does it have on the minds of our children? We have to think about what we say before we say it because we're responsible for what we say. And sometimes we say one little small word, well like people are gonna be thrown into the hellfire for one word. They didn't see the magnitude of that word and it threw them to the fire. Let's talk serious about what, let's be serious about what we say to our children. Let's make our children understand the responsibility that if they go too far, we can't save them. Boy, I can't save you, you go too far. Make them understand they're going to be responsible. What are we raising our children on? We're raising them on Islam. Islam, simple, alhamdulillah. Islam is simple. وَمَا خَلَقُتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have not created the jinn or the mankind except to worship me. فَرِيقُوا فِي الْجَنَّةِ وَفَرِيقُوا فِي السَّعِيرِ A group will be in Jannah and a group will be in the hellfire. It's that simple. We have to make our children understand. Our children think we don't understand. Wallahi, I don't know what we can tell our children. I don't know what we can tell them. I was 17. You tell your 17 year old, I was 17. Yeah, y'all was corny when y'all were 17. We cool. You don't understand? We understand that the hellfire is real. Tell us we don't understand that. We understand Jannah is real for the obedient. Muttaqoon. Tell us we don't understand that. A zina and all of its manifestations is haram. Tell us we don't understand that. Allah's Messenger وسلم, has prohibited intermingling of the sexes. Tell us we don't understand that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us to worship Him without describing any partners in worship with Him. Tell us we don't understand that. Wallahi, our children can't debate us when we quote Allah's book and the sunnah of His Messenger وسلم, They could beat us with all the times. Wallahi, the times change and they might be up on today's changes more than us. But you can't argue with Allah's book and the sunnah of his messenger alayhi salatu was salam. And these things cover all change times and places. Yeah, maybe we ain't know nothing about crack. We know intoxicants are haram. Tell us we don't know that. Tell us we don't know we have to establish the salah for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tell us we don't know that. Children can't, we're calling our, we ain't debating with the children where is the music today better than the music 20 years ago or better than the music 40 years ago. All of it was haram. Talking about which music is better. Music today is more advanced because of the technology. Come on, man. And looking at the haram is what? Haram. They're talking about. You looked at black and white haram, you know. We look in that color, haram. 
children, wallahi, let's don't do a disservice to our children. Let's teach them this deen of al-Islam. And let's try to rid our community and our lives of this abominable deen and evil way, the way of a zina. And let's try to live righteous lives and be noble people. As we were mentioning the example of Yusuf alayhi salam, let's live lives of uprightness. And let's teach our children to live lives of uprightness. And let's teach our children not to disgrace us or to disgrace themselves. And let's not disgrace ourselves and disgrace our children. And let's make them understand the seriousness of this as other Muslims understand the seriousness of this. Everybody does not have a kufr based understanding. Every Muslim does not have a kufr based understanding. Some Muslims have an understanding based on the kitab and the sunnah. This is what is upon us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us successful in understanding his book and the sunnah of his messenger alayhi salatu wa salam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us and our children from a zina. هذا وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم. I want to open the floor إن شاء الله تعالى for any comments or questions or statements إن شاء الله تعالى. السلام عليكم وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته. Is it allowed for the women to shun the women who have committed zina and is there a certain way of shunning them? This is, the answer to this question is a lecture. And that lecture was done some years ago and the tape's available and we'll summarize it inshallah ta'ala. And that's the talk, Muslims boycotting Muslims. What is important for us to understand from that is that the Muslims who transgress the bounds of obedience to Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or transgress the bounds against their own souls by living lives of sin then it has been prescribed for us Islamically to cut them off not to return the salams to them or any other speech after that not to return the salams Assalamu Alaikum frown, look the other way and walk away and no other interaction this has been prescribed not as a punishment. Allah is the one who punishes. This is not prescribed as a punishment for the one who did wrong. But this is prescribed as a means to bring the one who did wrong back to what is right. This is not a punishment. We're not giving you the salams to punish you. But we're not giving you the salams to remind you. To admonish you, to call you back to what you're supposed to be on. And if it is achieved, then it should be done. Meaning, if the Muslim community is doing their best to be on righteousness and obedience to Allah and His Messenger, وسلم, and that is the outward appearance in general of the Muslim community then whenever the sin creeps his ugly head up then the Muslims cut it off by boycotting them with no salams and no kalam nothing frowns looking the other way until the people come back to what is correct that's what this is prescribed for however often times or at times and sometimes we're living in these times may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us where Islam is not strong and the Sunnah is not known and that cutting someone off encourages them to do their wrong cutting someone off encourages them to do their wrong you ain't giving me the salams, nicks you did high water, funny looking, dress wearing, whatever and this is going to bring somebody farther away from Islam and that the outward appearance of Islam is not strong and the knowledge of the Sunnah is not widespread then the deen is nasiha in this case that you don't hang out with them to the point where you might fall into their wrong 
But every interaction you have with them, you try to win them over with kindness to obedience to Allah and His Messenger with good reminders, beautiful speech, calling them to the Kitab and the Sunnah, calling them away from their wrong. This is what Islam prescribes us in this chapter and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. I want to add on top of that that some of the children they think that Some of the children and adults along with them, they think that they're the ones to decide for us. They, the sinners, think that they're the ones to decide for those who are obedient when to boycott and when to give nasiha. If he wouldn't have boycotted me, I probably would have did what's right. He should have gave me nasiha. You don't decide how Allah's deen is to be practiced. Allah has already decided for you. You don't decide. Allah decides for you already. You know, the children don't decide for us how we're going to handle them. Allah has decided for us. And we summarized that when Islam is known or the sunnah is understood, and apparent and the strength is with the obedient then the boycott is proper to call the people back to what's right and when Islam is not known and understood and the Muslims are ignorant and disobedient in general then nasiha <coughs> is more proper at that time and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best not at the time that you or your children decide but at the time of the circumstances as we've learned from Allah's book and the Sunnah of His Messenger, Salawatullahi wa Salamu Alaihi wa Allahu A'lam. How do you advise brothers who divorce their wives and try to intermingle with them even though they are divorced? They are trying to win their wives back. Is this permissible? Is zina, per what she's saying is zina permissible? No. How should divorced couples with children behave? towards one another what is going too far the divorced couple is going to handle their children 
to the degree of handling the children and going too far is handling other than that is my son ready uh, he'll be ready in five minutes what's happening I don't know what you mean Akhi. you said he's gonna be ready in five minutes I just figure you know five minutes kick it you know I ain't talked to you in a while whatever all that stuff has nothing to do with the child it's going too far and what has to be done or said for the child then we hope that that's okay <clears throat> and as prescribed in Islam in general for the men when they have to uh, interact with the women who are not permissible for them because of one necessity or another then it's to be behind the veil this is the time to use the email this is the time to use the telephone this is the time to talk behind the curtain behind the door this is the time where that's proper Wallahu ta'ala a'ala Assalamu alaikum wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh how do I advise the parents to allow their daughters to marry when I do they begin to say they are not ready or the boy is too young even after these excuses the daughters tell them they really feel they need to be married to protect themselves but they refuse to listen to this daughter to their daughter and the result is that their children begin sneaking around which has become the case with many girls may Allah forgive them and protect our community Amin. In this point there's a couple of issues. Firstly, the discussion around the daughters being ready or not being ready, get them ready. Now, the issue around the daughters being ready to marry, not being ready, get them ready. Now, when your daughters are coming up, what are they going to do when they get older? They're going to be wives. Just like your boys are going to be Husbands, the men are coming up, our little boys, we're teaching them responsibility. Teaching them the importance of education and acquiring qualifications and skills as they're going to be the breadwinners of their families. Teaching them how to fight and be strong because he's going to be the one to defend his family. Teaching them to stay close to Allah's house because this is the guidance that he's going to need to guide his family right. This is what we're going to teach our children when they're young. He's memorizing Quran now. You say he doesn't know what it means. That's okay. When he's seven, he's memorizing what he's going to understand at 15. It's all going to be in place. He's going to memorize it at seven so that what he memorizes when he's young, it sticks with him. It's like that crazy stuff we used to say. Mary had a little lamb or something, still with us, can't get rid of it. Memorize it when you're young. When he gets old, he's going to get the tafsir. He's going to come to the masjid, learn the tafsir of those ayat, learn the explanation of those hadiths. He's going to be a husband and he's going to teach his family that. Now, likewise with our daughters, we're teaching them to be ready. What do you mean they're not ready? How did the girl get to be 10 years old? She don't know how to cook. they cooking at 10? Man, they're starting to cook at five. The girls are starting to cook at five. I'll show you how they're starting to cook at five. The mother is letting them get the tomatoes out. Lettuce, cucumbers, peppers, onions to make a salad. In order to prepare a salad, you have to first get the things out of the free refrigerator, put them on the counter, and then you start to cutting up. All right, at five, they're not going to get a knife. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You have a, a problem on your hand. But you teach them what to get out of the refrigerator. So by the time they're 10, they know all of the ingredients for a salad. They know the ingredients for the other recipes because they've been pulling out those ingredients for you for a time now. That's how they start to learn how to cook until they become old enough to hold a knife. Then you start teaching them basic cutting with a knife. And then when they're old enough to know the seriousness of fire, then you start to teach them the issues of the stove and so on and so forth how you, be te how you teach them 
responsibility. And this goes for the other issues also of preparing a young girl to be ready to be married. Now if the girl is not ready to be married, you're in trouble. The girl in trouble already as we're going to get to the next issue. But you're in trouble because that's your responsibility. Your children are your responsibility. Let's not say our children are not ready. Let's make them ready. Okay. <clears throat> the daughters, they say they really need to get married to protect themselves. I don't know what this means. All the way. Protect yourself from what? No. The girl, young girls not going out to get married, man. Fathers are marrying young girls, man. If already some problems have crept in when the girls say, I need to get married. There's some problems. Girls are raised to be shy. We don't know that Islam teaches the women to stay in their houses. Well, why are girls coming out to do what? Tell me why a girl, we buy her a car, she's driving off somewhere by herself. Tell me why our girls have to be by themselves before they get married. Ever. Tell me why. Islamically. Islamically, why do women have to be alone outside of the presence of their parents or in a public group with responsible Muslims? Tell me why our daughters have to be in that situation. Tell me what necessitates that. Nothing. Islam doesn't teach us to bring our Islam teaches us to bring our daughters up to be shy and modest and to be in the houses. Being in the houses is not oppression. Oppression is what we witness outside every day from these women. That's oppression. Wallahi, they have turned the lady into a piece of meat. Tell me that's not oppression of the sisters. Hanging her up on board billboards and buses all over every place. Jazakallah Tell me that's not oppression of the women. Who confused you? Shaitan has changed and made beautify to you disobedience to Allah and His Messenger Ali I got to get married. The sister got a problem already. I'm going to tell you what the problem is. Her parents. First, and everything else afterwards. Her parents didn't teach her no Islam. Her parents didn't teach her her place. What her parents do? Took her to the mall, dropped her off with a couple hundred dollars. Go buy something nice for you. You know your father, man, look out for him. Look out for my little girl. Kiss her on the cheek, put some hundred dollars in her pocket, leave her at the mall. That was the problem. Got the cable TV. Got her on the chat room on the internet. Got the music and this and that. Everybody need recreation, right? Wrong. Where you get everybody need recreation? Haram recreation. That's what you mean when you say recreation. You mean haram recreation. Otherwise, the halal is clear. Al halal ubayyin wal haram ubayyin. The Messenger of said, the halal is clear and the haram is clear. What you asking about? You ask them about the haram recreation. When you say recreation. Otherwise, if it was halal, it wouldn't be a discussion. Alright, you got your daughter on music, on the chat room, on the internet, in the mall hanging out, and then cooling out with a girlfriend in the car somewhere, and then the girls hanging out, spending the night over, and all kind of other stuff they doing. Now the girl's saying, I gotta get married. The, she, the problem is already before that. Let's start really, let's stop looking at, you know what I'm saying? Just putting a band aid on cancer. We got a, a serious problem, it needs to be dealt with. Okay, the, the girl done, you done jammed the life up already. You know what I'm saying? Consider that now. But for the normal circumstances, is a young girl doesn't get like this, man. What in the what, what type of shame does a lady have, a virgin girl, to say, "Marry me. I need to protect myself." Is that the statement of a righteous girl? 
And if it's not the statement of a righteous girl, who want to marry a criminal little girl? If that's not the statement of the righteous Muslim girls, who want to marry a criminal Muslim girl? Shouldn't have phrased that. For all of the brothers, come to me on the side. Send me all the criminal ones. I think I can work with them. <laughs> no. The brothers, they marry the shaitan, but it doesn't benefit them or the shaitan. No. وَلَا حَوْلَ وَلَا قُوَةَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ So this is what we wanted to mention around this issue here more so than those problems. Let's look back to what's the basis of this deed and being on top of it. How are your girls sneaking around your own milk? Broad daylight. What do they mean sneaking? Well, Lord, tell me what they mean sneaking around. Girls ain't climbing out the window. We live in apartment buildings. Girls not climbing out the floor. What they doing? Climbing down the fire escape. The fire escape too high now. You can't even jump off one of them joints. They ain't climbing down no fire escape. How the girls sneaking? What do you mean sneaking? I let her go to the mall. She wind up. Had call, already called the brother on the cellular phone. I got her. The brother met her at the mall. I left her with the car at the mall. For something. Or the father left the boy with the car. He wouldn't pick the girl up. Board it back. Three hours, man, you can go get a room. Come on, man. Stuck for the law, la vie. Well, I have to take issues serious. Problems aren't just the problems that we have, may Allah help us, but we led up to these problems. And sometimes the cure is going back and handling it. I'm not saying that, you know, what then took place didn't take place and we shouldn't try to handle it now yes we have to handle it but still let's look back at what we're supposed to do now that you done got the girl all hot stuck for Allah Allah thee marry her to one of the brothers and I'm I'm the first one admitting that the brothers they told me they're married now you want to know who gonna marry them type of women it's a whole bunch of brothers man I ain't gonna tell nobody's name a lot of brothers we brothers but the brothers gonna do that Sisters, husbands, fathers, you know, and wallahi, wallahu alam, because I don't know, maybe that after we got her hot and we married her to the brother, that that reunion of marriage, which is obedience to Allah and His Messenger, <coughs> might be enough to make both of them go the right way. Maybe it might be enough to make them go the right way. As not letting them do that and letting them commit zina, we know it's going to let them go the wrong way. One wrong leads to the next. Just like one right deed leads to the next. Wallahu a'lam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Akhi. Can you explain what is the zina of the eyes? Is it the second glance or is it something more? It's the first glance and everything after that. No. What you do out of accident and you turn your head, inshallah ta'ala does nothing against you. You're walking, you saw something, you turn your head real quickly. There's nothing against you. But you go to take a look, you're guilty. The first look and the second. Let's check out real quick. MashaAllah. <laughs> That's haram. Brothers be playing with text of life. They're playing with the text of the Kitab and the Sunnah. Playing with it. Wallahi, playing with Islam don't get you nowhere. With us, you over. We told you before, you wouldn't get over on me, you over. You ain't even got to give me no game. I'm going to tell you right now, before you give me some game, you over. But with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, them excuses don't work, man. He sent his deed down. He made it clear. Clear. Islam is clear, alhamdulillah. You don't get no first look, man. An accident is an accident. Inshallah, you won't be responsible. But a first intentional look, you're guilty. 
No. And if you keep looking after the accident, you're guilty. No. That's the zina of the eyes is looking. Wallahu a'lam. Salam. I think that's what you're supposed to say at the end. <laughs> no. Wa alaykum salam. The reaction or response to those who have committed the act of zina seems to be more acceptable or at least tolerated more readily than those who have committed the crime of using intoxicants. Many of whom were treated very harshly sometimes in public. Can you explain why is this? I can't explain. I can't explain why somebody accepts disobedience to Allah and His Messenger And this is a diseased heart. And this heart might not have any Iman in it. May Allah purify our hearts and fill them up with Iman. What is displeasing to Allah and His Messenger is displeasing to the believer. What is hateful to Allah and His Messenger is hateful to the believer. Both of these are hateful, are hated acts. And displeasing to Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam But this issue of zina Really And we did it before And everyone thought I was too harsh Except for some of the brothers Thought I was too light On the topic The child of zina Will not enter into Jannah The child of zina Will not enter into Jannah Wallahi we forgot that talk and the sisters, they boycotted that talk to their own destruction. Because since that talk, Muslim girls got pregnant. Since the talk, the child of zina will not enter into Jannah. Muslim children have committed zina, brought another child of zina on the scene. We'll just re re rephrase a couple of points to see. That child of Zina, who are the parents? Who are the parents? People who commit Zina. Disobedient to Allah and His Messenger, Fornicators are the parents. If Yusuf السلام, is noble, because his father was a prophet, and grandfather, and great grandfather, and all of that led to him, being who he is, what do you think fornicators need their child to be? Righteous? Listen, boy. You see that? See that? Astaghfirullah, Allah, Can't even say what I want to say. See that? What you call him I got back there in the room? What I'm about to do to her, don't you ever do to a girl. That's what, you're going to, that's what he's going to teach his son? And if that's not what he's going to teach his son, you tell me what he's going to, uh, a fornicator is going to teach his boy. And the girl, what's she going to teach his boy? The girl, what's she going to teach her little girl? Look at the innocent little baby. How the baby going to be innocent? The mother teaching the baby how to lie. How the mother get pregnant. How the little girl get pregnant? Lying. Telling her parents one thing while she goes out to do another thing. Lying in itself leads to the hellfire. Lying in itself leads to the hellfire. Mix all of the zina that happened afterwards. Lying in itself. She's going to teach the boy how to lie. She's going to teach the boy how to sneak around. She's going to teach the little child how to get over. She's going to teach the child how not to be responsible. She's going to teach the child everything bad. Proof of is what she's doing. If she felt what she was doing was so wrong, why is she doing it? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. Yes. We have girls, young girls, carrying babies with the bad. Girls who already have the limitations of the bad. Are they allowed to come here to master it? My brother, he says that we have girls who committed zina 
and they have the bastard children with them. And there are Muslim girls who have bastards in their bellies right now. Are they prohib are they is it permissible for them to come to this Islamic center of America? What do you think we should do? Tell them they can't come? I already told them don't come. No, but I'm going to say myself, I told them don't come. And I told all them disobedient women that's in accordance with them, don't come either. Some women taught our little girls that. Don't act like ain't no women taught our little girls how to be fornicated. Somebody taught them. I don't care if the lady married. A married lady can teach her children zina. Married lady can teach her children zina. How she teach them zina? With the music, and the TV, and the internet, and the mall, and all kind of other stuff. And then let her children go out. Don't do anything, Khadija, or whoever. What you mean don't do it? Don't do what? You send her out. Well, like somebody even told me, Muslim boy, he waiting for his girlfriend at the school. I'm walking her home. Boy, you can't wait here no more. Let's hold on. I'm taking her home. Man. I'm just walking her home. I ain't doing nothing. Standing there, all the steps that it took him to get there to wait was Zina. How he gonna say he ain't doing nothing? Standing there, the girl in the class. He's standing outside by himself in the cold in the haram. And if he's not, what he is when he's standing there? When you standing in the masjid waiting for the salat, what you in? Salat. And you standing there waiting for the haram, what you in? La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Y'all let him come in here. I ain't let him in here. Those children, wallahi, they come here, they showing off the little bastard children. They ain't they showing, they showing the children, oh, look at my little baby. Oh, he cute. Now, they, everybody smiling. Our children know, man, you ain't married. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They're asking us. How what you call him get a baby a bee? She ain't married, is she? What you gonna say? That's polite. That's halal. We trying to stay halal with our tongues over all this stuff, man. We just left Jahiliya. You hear all this stuff, our tongues want to say the haram. May Allah preserve our tongues from the haram. I don't want to let them in here. But if y'all let them in here, it's on you all. I think, Wallahu alam, Islam strong in these times. And the sunnah is open and its presence is known. Like I said, the kuffar know. And the Muslims know. And we need to stand on what's right. Somebody said, if you boycott her from the master, she might go farther away. Farther away from what? What's she on? They came to the master to repent. They didn't come to the master to repent. Y'all want to challenge me? Come challenge me. They don't know how to make no salat, man. Joker's going through some motions in the back of the master with their baby on the side. You talking about... They, they came to repent. They sitting in the back. They ain't menstruating. They ain't making salat. They came to show a bastard off, man. Wing off some of our children. We sitting there saying, Ayla wa sahla. Welcome them. I ain't welcome them. They don't come to the front. I ain't never seen no boy say, man, it's my girl baby. <laughs> I ain't seen no father tell me that. I ain't trying to have it. I'm escorting them out myself. So they join the sisters, they letting them, they letting the sisters, the people come in like that. Girl coming in, ain't married, stomach big like that. She walking all around in the masjid. Everybody knows who she is. I ain't let her in. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. How do we treat our virgins? Is it permissible for them to go out by themselves or with groups of their girlfriends? Should we even allow them to sit in the front? row of the musalla i.e. on Jumu'ah please advise us on the limits that should be set for the virgins 
uh, some of these questions are going to be lectures in themselves. But in general, the women are to stay in the houses. And the etiquettes for the masjid are the same. The women should be the last ones in and the first ones out. In today's khutbah and in tonight's lecture, you discuss zina. Concerning the school, has anyone looked at at making the admissions process more stringent and when certain individuals are around or uh, among others with bad character and doing an abominable evil deed such as zina I fear that they spread and perhaps promote that same evil to the other students who do not do those things in turn it may make the school as a whole look and look bad even though the school teaches the students the proper way. I believe that the school has a lot of good in it and now and also and also has a lot of potential. What steps can we take to curb Zina as well as other things and explore that potential? The Mudi and myself have began to take a look at this issue as well as other brothers and sisters. And we hope that the community as a whole send in their suggestions and recommendations and ideas. Because oftentimes <clears throat> we find ourselves confronted with complex situations that we don't have all of the answers for. May Allah help us. If we kick them out of the school, the parents will cry. Where am I send my children at? If we keep them in the school, then we have a problem. We have to come to some common means. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. We're trying to take some steps to make things better. And the success is with Allah. May He make us successful. Yes. I encourage the students when I teach the 12th grade class, I encourage the students to take education extremely seriously. And we've been pushing this as we've been trying to teach our children that if they educate themselves, that they might be able to handle some of these complex problems that we're not able to handle. Because we didn't educate ourselves for what we're doing now. No. Allah guided us, alhamdulillah. But our children, they need to prepare themselves for what's happening, that they might be better able to handle some of the problems that we're not able to handle. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. But in general, when it comes to the mission, we're doing the mission process, we're doing the best we could. And really, a lot of the look, a lot of what goes on around admissions is volunteer work. As when you say you want an admission, we don't have an admissions board that's a paid staff. Like we said, we need a whole board of education. And they'd have a department admissions. And then everybody that will come to the school will go through that department. And then they'd be able to look at it and so on and so forth. We're looking at everything, man. So we can put 5, 10, 15 minutes you know, or whatever, to whatever issue that we're able to put and to do the best that we could. Wallahu al-Musta'ar. This is why we encourage the Muslims to encourage their children to educate themselves. 
to get the most that they could out of education that they might be able to help us solve some of these problems. And the best education is knowledge of Allah's book and the sunnah of his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nothing can help us solve our problems better than the Qur'an and the sunnah. Nothing can help us solve our problems better than the Qur'an and the sunnah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. Bismillah, assalamu alaikum wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, I understand your point of view because Islam is clear, alhamdulillah. However, we raise our daughters to be modest and have a Muslim uh, character. But you have to understand we don't like in an Islamic, we don't live in an Islamic country. But not this is an excuse. But zina is all around us. It may enter our heart even though we have Islam. So how can you say it is improper and unmodest that young Muslim girls uh, says marry me because I need to be married to protect herself from the haram for know what she is I don't know, know what she is feeling only Allah for no I guess no one knows what she is feeling only Allah and by her wanting to be married it may not be from TV radio etc did the young girl ask the prophet to marry her how would you have described her not as a young lady she was not a young virgin she was a an older lady who was responsible for her affairs and not a young girl. At any rate, to be more understanding as that seems to have come from one of the young girls herself. May Allah protect her. Fathers, be on your case. It's for the fathers to marry their daughters. The brothers, they come and tell me, I'm asking the fathers, ain't nobody trying to do nothing. Really, why? how many fathers are asking brothers? The fathers are supposed to be on the look, lookout. The fathers are supposed to be on the lookout. How are he going to be on the lookout? Come to the master. Come to the master and see what's going on. Talk with the young brothers, interact with the young brothers see what's going on and ask them if you want to do something. Because if this is the case of one of the sisters, it might be the case of another sister. It may be the sister didn't tell her parents or maybe she hinted to her parents and her parents don't, don't understand. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. Fathers, this is a warning to us. Fathers, this is a warning to us. Today it's a warning and tomorrow it's shame. May Allah help us. I overheard one of the young sisters saying to the other, the way that you're supposed to get your parents to let you go out to do the things that the kuffar do is to keep asking them until they say, yes, go ahead out. Do those parents share in the sin that their children commit? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he prohibits us, وَلَا تَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْإِثْمِ وَالْعُدْوَانِ And don't help one another to commit sin and transgression. Allah prohibited that. If you do what Allah prohibited, then you get a sin for doing what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made forbidden. Don't help your children commit sins. And stop being afraid. Matter of fact, just stop them from asking you twice. Don't ask me twice. No. Ask me. You just teach your children. Don't ask me twice. They ask you again. 